mentioned, I'm going to do privileged white male triggers oppressed victims, ban this video now and block him from Million Dollar Extreme 2. Um, this just hits close to home, you know? Okay, this is from July 15th, 2014. Um, how oh, I want to read this whole thing. Uh, we'll start reacting and then maybe I'll go down there and check this out. Oh my gosh, like this whole time, you know, like just 2014. What is this intro? Like, <laughs> is this Final Fantasy? I only know that because I think my brother played it. Like, I, I'm not into stuff like this, so, and it looks weird. So he just killed Twitter, I guess. Oh my god, his face on that thing, though. <laughs> Ew, why do you do this to me? Like, I... Yeah, it's 2014. <laughs> Look at that iPhone. <laughs> we performed at a Twitter comedy show. Okay, that's what it is. Went really badly. Half the audience walked out because of a particular Howard Stern shock jock humor piece that was too X-rated to be believed. So Charles and Sam both have clips. I thought we were having a great night with cool vibes, but I guess I was wrong. And obviously... In Williamsburg Street Fashion and an inconvenient anime. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Everybody, this is... I'm just saying, anyway, here is a cautionary tale, what not to do at a Williamsburg Twitter comedy show. <laughs> I, I, well, I could have told you that. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is great. Um, this is fun, especially of this time. Like, I probably, I, I, I appreciate it now, but I would appreciate it back then, too. Um, for those of you don't, who don't remember, or it, I don't know what Williamsburg, Brooklyn is like now, but I remember, like, I'm not from that area at all. I only know this because I remember people making fun of hipsters around, like, between, like, 2007 and 20, now, you know, 2016, I guess. It's, I would say 2016 is when I stopped hearing people make fun of hipsters, but basically... The point is, is that the joke was, like, they're from Williamsburg, Brooklyn. It, it's kind of seen as, like, the origin point of, like, the millennial hipster, like, that area, you know? And I guess, like, Gen X might fall into it a little bit, too. Like, younger ones. Okay, sorry for that tangent. Okay, so we're going to see Baby Charles and Baby Sam. You know, they're just little youngins. Oh, my gosh. Um... <laughs> been to a live thing like this in a long time. This is bringing back a lot of memories of going out in my early 20s. <laughs> like, around this time. <laughs> Tell us kind of don't worry, we will post this set in another video. Hey, hey, hey everybody. My name is Charles Carroll, also known as Richard Windsor. Richard Windsor? Richard Windsor, look him up. It's great to be back here. It's been a long time. Should we look him up? I feel really safe. It's been a minute since I've been to New let me remember that. This is 21 minutes. Cool. That's not what I came We're here gonna to be here a while. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about something else. <laughs> Some people might consider it more than men. Some people might consider him a freak. I don't, and I don't think you should either. His name is Sam Hyde. He's a billion dollar streamer. Did he say? Uh, did he say some people might consider him more than a man? Some people might consider him a freak. <laughs> Honestly, um, Sam Hyde gives me major goo goo dolls. What's that video where he's like, I don't want the world to see me because I don't think that they'd understand. And he's like looking through a telescope. Um, I just, yeah, you guys know. Okay, <laughs> Sam gives me goo goo doll vibes. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, Look at him. Man, can we, uh, we've seen some great comments, and I think we saw some really cool stuff. Um, I personally have never seen 
uh, anything quite as cool as what I've seen today. Can we get a big round of applause for everybody that's gone up so far? And so far and so far? Wow. That was the fact that okay so during this time i would have killed to live in new york city or like brook especially this area and like i'm just looking at it i'm like the mid-sized city that i lived in like it's the exact same thing so like i don't think like, the older I get and the more experiences that I have, like, I don't think the dream I had about big city living as, like, a 20-something gal, like, it just, it, you could get that in a lot of different places. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's just really expensive to live there. It's way cheaper to live in a mid-sized city. I don't know about now, but back then, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. I can't tell you how happy I am uh, being in a room full of. Uh, it's just I'm looking at this and it's like I literally went out to a comedy show that like had this exact setup and looks exactly the same. And it's like I can't. I'm just saying like I wanted to go. Like I thought it was. I thought it would like just make my life if I lived in New York or L. A. At at this like in my early twenties. And I I just feel like that's wrong. But I don't know. That's. Oh, wow, I'm really fucking this up. <laughs> uh, hipster faggots right now. <laughs> um, nice. You guys... Oh, and she's you, gone. <laughs> you, have, the short you, you get knocked for a lot of things, I think. Um, you sort of live in this fantasy world where everything's fun. And I saw an Asian kid, like a, like a Southeast Asian kid in a tank top driving a Porsche Cayenne with like a black vinyl wrap around it. And I just... It made me realize I want to kill everybody in here. Um, but you guys, that's the, only, that's the only reason I think of uh, can knock you guys. I mean, you have good taste, and I don't, I'm not here to knock you. I'm here to defend you and be your friend. You have good taste. You, you listen have to the good best taste. music. Is that true? That's true, isn't it? You listen. Well, let's okay, give me the blow. Okay, here's here's me right here. Oh, no. I listen to. Um, Top 40 radio hits. I want you to blow my mind by telling me your favorite band right now. You're going to, you're, look, come yeah. on, man, impress. This is so of this time. Like, to this, I mean, like, it, it hasn't stopped happening. I get thrown off guard when somebody asks me, like, what kind of music do you like? You know, because, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I, that's like that, you know, but it used, I used to hear that all the time, like, when I was dating and I felt like this was pretty standard practice. Like, it's just like a thing, like, we were judging the hell out of each other for the music that we liked, like, in this culture, you know? And I don't I don't know these kids. I just, they seem a lot like the kids that I hung out, or people I hung out with in my 20s, you know? Like, just living in a girl You're going to get so much pussy. You're going to blow my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Come on, don't let me down. What's a good band here? I like the Mountain Goats. The mount I've heard of the mountain. Not, I can't make fun of you because that's uh, that band is they're probably they're probably the best. <laughs> they're probably a damn good band. I, I feel you have the best taste. And, um, I feel when so it comes cool to right comedy, now. it's no different. You have you got great comedy here. Uh, I'm gonna do a little something a little different tonight, and I'm gonna count on you all being open minded. I know you're all probably liberals, but I think uh -oh. you're also probably <laughs> open minded, which means you'll That's like Sam Hyde's twenty 10's calling card is like, I hope you'll be a little open minded. <laughs> like, I've seen a lot of these, okay? Like, he's. Oh, oh Sam. <laughs> Listen to something different, and you'll give it a chance, and you'll, you might and you'll hear a few a things chance. that you agree with, uh, or you might reject it entirely, and that's fine. I don't blame you for that, but I know you're not going to shut me down right away when I start to speak from the heart here, okay? <clears throat> Hold on a second. Homosexual behavior is antisocial and not at all linked to physical desire. Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 funny. Okay. <laughs> Guys, um, this, is, this is a serious issue that's kind of fucking up the country right now. We've got to talk about it. Uh, homosexuality is the manifestation of intense perversion uh, and antisocial attitudes. Okay, Now, um, I don't expect you to take that as proof right away. Yeah, I... I this is like... I don't know if I would like spend too much time listening to conservatives. 
I'm trying to think back to like how I would have felt if I actually watched this in 2014. And I guess, yeah, like I probably would have turned off this video. I mean, I would not keep watching because like I just, it's kind of, I don't know. Like I guess because Sam's like a little older and went to, like I remember him talking about he knew a girl who was studying queer theory in like 2004, which means he got exposed to that or like he was aware of that like way ahead, like way ahead of, I mean, I, I don't think I was like old enough to know about that necessarily. Like he, you know what I mean? Like he was in, he was at college. Right. So I just, I don't know, but yeah, I, I wouldn't have gotten past that. It doesn't hearing it now. Like, I'm just thinking like, Oh my God, that probably sounds insane to the people in that room. Cause that would, that would have sounded really insane even to like a normal person. Um, but I don't know, like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. There's also just this element of like, well, do, wait till you see what happens next, Sam. You know, although that stuff was kind of already happening. Right, but I expect you to bear with me and listen to a few things I have to say. I see you're, oh, well, you can't believe what you're hearing right now. Wow, I'm so, oh my God. That's, the, that's the way I feel when I see Rachel Maddow talking about uh, lesbians raising kids together. That's, I feel like. Oh dear. That's what I look like when I'm watching TV. <laughs> nice. um, now, the only... The, uh, it sucks. He's like... It doesn't suck. He's just like... He's commanding, but he's also naturally funny. Um, very captivating. <laughs> you, know, you guys are familiar with Kinsey, right? He did all those experiments on uh, child sexuality in the 60s. Anyway, one of the things that he did get um, was a clear picture of what homosexuality really is. And uh, out, of the, out of the percentage of the population that we say is studied, queer... Which would be I studied Kinsey... Um, yeah, if you're a psych major or you take a human sexuality class in college, you'll probably study Kinsey. It's gross. About 8 to 10%. That's percent, all 1%. <laughs> very, very small amount of people are just, are, are people who are actually genetically predisposed to liking butts. He, 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 making butt promises. The rest are just oh. perverted freaks. Let's think about why is rape so prevalent in prisons, in uh, male-on-male rape, okay? All across America, you have millions of people um, without access to uh, females, they don't have girlfriends, but they masturbate. They don't go around raping each other. So it's it's not a lack of access to females that causes this. It's that homosexuality is a decidedly aggressive outlet of anger or social anxiety. Okay? Uh, why else do gay men have so many sex partners? They have sex partners in the hundreds compared to the average hetero assortment of you know, 5 to 15 sex partners. <laughs> it means it's a higher number, but... Um, <laughs> has anybody ever heard of uh, Age Patient Zero? Anybody? you probably heard of this guy, okay? Um, his name was Gaten Dugas, and spoiler alert, he was a hypersexual faggot who fucked hundreds of men yearly. Okay, they don't mention that a lot on the news, uh, the media. Um, um, what I learned about him is that he was a pilot. He was a French pilot, and he he went from Africa to San Francisco, and that's where he brought the virus to America. That's I, I, I now I learned that I studied that like over ten years ago, so I don't know if that's accurate, but uh, yeah. Uh, but and he's French, and I can say that because that's in my European background. I can make fun of French people, okay? <laughs> You'll seldom hear about what his sexual proclivities had to do with the, the original outbreak of AIDS. Uh, here are a few choices. Could you stop talking, please? You two, right there. Just go outside and get the talk. Oh my here, are God. A few choice, here are a few choice quotes. I'm saving. Now, this is for the future. This is for the kids that you're going to, your kids here, okay? Bye. Bye bye. You don't want to hear something that's... Okay, whatever. Who cares? Um, here are a few quotes from Gate Dugas, the AIDS patient zero. Quote number one, of course I'm going to have sex. Nobody's proving to me that you can spread cancer. Here's quote number two at a, a little, little bit of a later point there. It's like... Um, it's their duty to protect themselves. Oh, wow. They're they know what's insane. going on out there. They've heard about this disease. Here's quote number three, clearly from a little bit later in his life. I've got gay cancer. I'm going to die, and so are you. A big round of applause for Gaten Dugas, please. Age patient zero. Thank you. Um, now, a lot of people will say that... Uh, he might not have been a pilot. The I don't know. Stems, uh, well, what I would say, I think it stems from child abuse. People will say, look at the brain. Look at the brain scan. It's genetic. It's clearly a genetic uh, thing. But uh, that doesn't really prove anything because 
Meth addicts have a different brain scan, but they weren't born. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Scan. See, this is why I have a problem with neuroscience. This is exactly why I have a problem with neuroscience. And I can't believe how many people like fell for the, they did a brain scan thing. Like that is so, if you know anything about like, you know, the, you know, a, the whole conversation and aspects of like environmental causes or factors versus genetic factors. And like you hear like, oh, we did brain scans of an adult person, their brain lights up differently, therefore depression is genetic. Like if you don't see how there's so many holes in that kind of thinking, like, yeah. Now I, I would think, I would hope that a neuroscientist or neurologist or anybody in that realm like would would see right through that. Cause that seems pretty basic. Like you definitely don't need a PhD to see like how that's not very up to par with, you know, sciencey McSciencey stuff, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm, that's a way better way of saying that. Leave it to Sam to take an idea I've had in my head for years and say it way better and more charismatically. <laughs> Mathematics, were they? No. He's great. <laughs> um, no. So that's just idiotic. Yeah. What else we got here? Um, so we have this kind of uh, this view of homosexuals that they're just promiscuous because they like to party and have fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would say it's probably more along the lines that uh, gay people are more predisposed to having mental disorders, uh, and uh, they're they're two to threefold more likely to manifest mood disorders, anxiety disorders, and substance use disorders than heterosexuals. I can see we have a lot of receptive minds in the audience here. Um, and uh, some people will counter that by saying, wah, wah, they have mental disorders because they're victimized and they're bullied and it's homophobia. And what I would say to, to refute that point is, uh, is I would talk about the enlightened Europeans, our cousins over across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one isn't like so much, like, I don't know. Like, I'm trying, I'm really trying to dig in and see, like, like what, how I would have, if I actually like mustered the urge, cause I think I would have been cringing too much to actually watch this. Like if I had actually like gotten through this, like what would I be thinking right now? I don't know. It's very close to what I studied in school though. I uh, just obviously like the way I studied this in, in college, like was not delivered to me in the way that he's delivering this. You know? Ocean, the Europeans who are so enlightened, Let's talk about the Dutch. The Dutch are very tolerant people. They're, they're the most tolerant when it comes to homosexuals. They tolerate uh, weed smoking. They tolerate gay marriage. They even tolerate pedophiles. Um, so gay people in, in uh, Dutch land, they don't, get, they don't get bullied, do they? No, they don't. However, why is it that when, when we look at Dutch homosexuals and bisexuals, the, um, the uh, mental health uh, profile is the same as their American counterparts? Um, homosexuals are about seven times more likely to manifest bipolar disorder and about six times more likely to manifest uh, OCD symptoms. And um, yeah. also, we're ignoring the fact that OCD and bipolar disorder are... Uh, <laughs> are um, supposed to be about comedy and stuff. Um, well, I'm trying to get a message across here because I, I understand you guys have seen some funny stuff and maybe you're ready for some sort of thing that's... I mean, if you think about it on a level, this is darkly funny, I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it is like this 2014 Williamsburg, Brooklyn. That's pretty funny on it's just the fact that this happened is funny, I would say. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. more, uh, also, wow. I don't know, sorry. Uh, yeah. If you don't like it, you can leave. Go ahead. The biggest laugh I've had all night. Well, I'm having a big laugh too, uh, just looking at you. Ooh, girl, you tell them. Yeah. Oh. Have a nice night. Go get in the car crash. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, so OCD oh and bipolar disorder. Does this sound like this a person so you intense. know? Does this sound like somebody? <laughs> Does this sound like a person you know? A gay, a gay person with OCD and bipolar disorder. Next time you see a crazy gay person, maybe it's not because they were bullied. Maybe it's not because of homophobia that they have these sort of mental problems. Maybe it's just because of their faggot brain that's all fucked up. That's what I'm. That's what I think. Um, oh my God! Look at that. Well, it, that is one of those flip cams. Is that like a flip cam thing? You guys remember those? Also, I love. 
whoever's seen the camera work for this, <laughs> is this Charles that like zoomed it? Cause you know, right. I don't know. It's great. Um, but wow, this is, so, this is like more intense than it is funny in a way, like at moments, you know, like it's, um, yeah. Oh my God. I would say this is probably my fourth time watching this, I think. So um, I'm really studying. Let's talk about the bareback brotherhood for a moment. This is, a lot of these sources that the I'm using are anti like gay hate websites. They are um, websites that are that are run by gay people and frequented by gay people. So let's talk about the Bareback Brotherhood, okay? Here's a quote from their website. The Bareback Brotherhood is a social network of men from around the globe from all walks of life. We agree on one thing. Sex between men without barriers is natural and a legitimate choice. Sounds reasonable. Um, as consenting adults, skin-to-skin -skin intimacy should be a choice that is not demonized or marginalized. Fuck more, fear less. That's a nice little motto to have there. Here's a profile from that, <laughs> that website. That is so crazy. Piero here, nice to meet you. Oh wait, a fuck more, fear less. <laughs> That's terrible. I hate that so much right now. So, I don't like that all. I'm mainly into man sex, anal sex, and body fluids exchange. Yeah. I love Oh, God. I like God. almost anything in sex, as long as it's played raw and dirty. Barebacking is the only choice for me. And I'm even a romantic guy, mostly when I have something raw up my ass. <laughs> the way he delivers this. No, you don't get it. I'm a dirty and proud gay pause barebacker, and I smoke <laughs> a lot. Now, this guy's wholesome, right? This is just like the gay characters we see on Glee. And on The Office, they're just like the gay characters we see on TV. That right? was funny. He should probably be allowed to marry and raise funny. children and adopt children. Mm, yeah, that would be a good idea. No. Here's an inconvenient truth. Exa exactly. That's, yeah, that's the thing is like, it's the same with like, you know, a dad watching porn. You know, like, would you really want to have your child live in a household with someone who's watching pornography? I don't think so, you know? Like, yeah. The first aid step is a minor. Ooh, surprise, surprise! Gay pedophilia? What? What? Yeah. His name was Robert Rayford. He died at age 15. I remember, like, hearing that from radical feminist a lot. Um, you know, like, just... There's a stigma. There's a stigma, you know, because they're they're like very like, oh my god, the the trans stuff is, you know, eliminating rights for women, you know, but we're still pro gay or whatever, right? Like, um, I don't I don't know if you got how much you guys know about radical feminism and like those ladies or like the turfs or whatever um, is what they're called on the internet usually. <laughs> um, I just, I, I forget. Yeah, it's like trans exclusionary radical feminists. They basically like just don't agree with it. It's great. It's great that they don't agree with like the gender, transgender stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, I just, that was a big topic too. I came across a lot. Um, and I actually did a a research paper about pro pedophilia groups. Um, I did not find the bear, but I think I focused on Nambla most mostly. So yeah, actually I, it wasn't a whole paper. It was just, we did, I was taking like a format APA format class, which I didn't need to take. It was a complete waste of time because I'm, I'm a Dumbo. Um, but I took the class anyway. And yeah, I, I just had to do like an abstract, um, for a paper. So I didn't do like a, I, I don't know if I could have stomached doing a whole paper on that now that I think about it, you know, but I, it was like a topic I really wanted to do. And then I just did an abstract uh, for this format class. And I was like, I might not. And I never studied or wrote about that topic again, <laughs> you know. I started having symptoms at age 13. Now, why don't we talk about this stuff on those cool TV shows we all like to watch, like Ellen DeGeneres? Mm -hmm. um, do you think America would be fine with that? No, we better clean that image up. We better have, paint a nice, pretty picture. Gay yeah. men, single, monogamous relationships, hand-in-hand, uh, -hand, white picket fences. That's the way it is. Not tons of sexual promiscuity. Um, by the way, this is the Zog media machine, the Zionist occupation government media machine, destroying the family, destroying the building block of America. No big deal, right? It's cool. Let's listen to some records on our iTunes. Um, uh, and side note, okay, I didn't wake up this morning hating Jews. I really didn't. 
I didn't even wake up thinking about Jews. I didn't have a dream where I thought about killing a bunch of Jews. I, it, it doesn't enter into my mind at all during the day unless I am provoked into thinking about it. And here's what I thought about. Um, I can't help but notice the primary figures behind all these social justice movements are all Jewish. What? Uh, why? The, uh, the, the, that, what yeah, a big question. question. I like this guy super. in the front. He's into Jewish. it. You know, uh, this guy right here. <laughs> you know. What did it, did everyone look like him? pushing uh, sexual inappropriate this. media to our children. Tell little girls, go out and use your pussies and fuck, 12-year-old girl. Here's a music video. Britney Spears. True. Hey, pussy, go fuck. Oh, they're all Jewish, okay? Hollywood, all Jewish. Um, the leaders of the, uh, yeah. the, the, mem- the founding members of the NAACP, you can look this up on Wikipedia when you get home, they're all Jewish. Why? Why are they all Jewish? Why would they be black for the NAACP? That's weird. Maybe it's just because Jews are progressive and enlightened. I guess that's probably it. Folks, I've got gay cancer. I'm going to die, and so are you. Uh, now, we all know that homosexual men are in committed relationships, and they just want to... Wow, yeah. Um, I was just thinking, there's a documentary I've seen on YouTube that's been bopping around called Hollywoodism. And it's, like, literally about how, like, Jewish families founded Hollywood. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I would take a peek at that. It's 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 actually it's just like a fun documentary. Like all these Jewish families like coming from this place. So I, that just made me think of that. I know. Okay. Raise children. Let's read a popular and fun op-ed piece from an Advocate by Michael Lucas. This is titled "Live in a World Where Everyone Has HIV." Sounds like a fantasy land, doesn't it? <laughs> Here's a sentence I never thought I would write. I'm in favor of a don't ask, don't tell policy. Not in the military, of course, those days are behind us, but in the bedroom. What I'm talking about specifically is HIV, and my point is that, at least when it comes to sex, we should talk about it less. It amazes me that in 2011, so many people still won't sleep with HIV-positive guys. Wow, that's a weird little surprise. Uh, but it's true, yeah. many HIV-negative friends have told me they won't have sex with anyone they know to be positive. I wonder why, that's so prejudiced and hateful. And I've heard from the other side, too, yeah. from positive friends, uh, horror stories about the difficulties of finding a mate. So that's, you have a death sentence, you're walking around with a, a lethal injection in your balls, and you can't find a mate. Oh, jeez, it's hard luck, pal. Now, yeah. um, he advocates not telling your partner that you're HIV positive and not asking your partner if he's HIV positive. Sounds like the gay community is really starting to figure things out. He goes on, until then, it's none of your business. Leave HIV status off your hookup checklists and manhunt profiles and pre-sex chatter. In this case, ignorance really can be bliss. There are a huge number oh my of gosh, super hot HIV so positive guys out there that HIV negative men are losing out on. Man, I feel totally chipped. I'm losing out on all these great HIV positive guys. Yeah. It's time to rid the gay community of irrational fears and discrimination that have held us back for far too long. The baseline rule should be simple don't ask, don't tell, stay smart, and enjoy the hell out of each other. He's a real leader for the homo community. And I guess I'm a real homophobe for reading a piece written by a gay man in a gay magazine. That makes me a fucking homophobe, right? Jesus. I'm going to leave you guys with some statistics here. I know, yeah, straight from the horse's mouth. I, yeah, don't sweat the technique, right? Oh my gosh, he's so great. I don't, I'm a fan. Oh, baby Sam. And I don't have a whiteboard, <laughs> um, so you're going to have to follow along closely. But these are all statistics. This is from the Department of Justice that I took these. And uh, for, the, for the purposes of factoring these things, I'm going to be using the most lenient, I'm going to be painting the prettiest picture possible. I'm not going to be using, if it's a range of statistics, I'm not going to be using a plus or minus three to my advantage here. 96% of all child molesters are male. One out of three molestation victims is a boy. One to three percent of the total U.S. population is homosexual. One to three percent of the general population commits one third of the child molestation. What that means is, best case scenario, is that 55% of homosexuals are child molesters. So that means when you go meet a new friend, and he's gay, oh, hey, what's up, I'm gay, I'm totally best friend material, I'm cool, I'm the people you see on TV, yeah. right? I'm totally well-adjusted. Uh, flip a coin, and if it's heads, he's probably going to get a kid head later. Um, sexy six-year-old. Thank you, guys. Stay safe, use protection, and remember, I've got gay cancer, 
I'm going to die, and so are you. Thank you, guys. Wow. Yeah, where's the... Charles, come on. Okay, we will post more in another video. Chuck did two bits and Sam did officer <laughs> too much joy and merriment. A few worry words got ruffled over this set, but most of the other comedians had a great time and so did I. Tons of cool people got to meet and saw some really good routines up there. Please check out their stuff online too. Oh, they're such sweethearts. Look at them. Look at this. Oh, I don't know. I can't I'm starting to notice, you know, the like design. What? <laughs> okay, this is like this. I don't know. I haven't I've always seen this. Okay. Oh was called <laughs> like as he was called that it's like I mean dude a guy was getting shot like obviously there's an escalated situation like people yell all kinds of obscenities like I don't I I don't know if I would have noticed that in 2014 but I certainly noticed the lack of logic in that as well like I doubled nowadays. in this year alone in this city. What kind of shit are you doubled? In the West Village, so in New York City, wow. in 2014. Is this a, don't say that Don't shit. defend the word faggot. But it's that simple. all the time. There are psychopaths oh everywhere. Oh my god. There's a word that's going to be a piece of shit. Why does it matter who 